achieve uh, from the summit and what do you hope to achieve from the summit? Well, let me first of all thank the government of India and particularly Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji for the invitation. It is, of course, the first time that Mauritius is participating to a G20 Heads of uh, State Summit. And, uh, of course, it is a great honor and privilege. We are looking forward uh, to constructively uh, engage with uh, G20 members in order to foster global cooperation uh, and see that the challenges that uh, we face, particularly as a small island state, are in fact addressed. I think everyone uh, can draw lessons from the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic that we have been facing and uh, not only in terms of uh, affecting uh, the health of uh, the population, but its uh, consequences on the world economy. And this has been aggravated now by the conflict in Ukraine. And also we see that climate change, for example, are uh, affecting all countries. So we are at a juncture where I think this summit comes at a very opportune time for us to draw lessons from what has happened, what is happening, and to see how we can uh, work together to make uh, the global economy more uh, resilient, inclusive, and uh, of course, sustainable. So this is the, the, the approach of right. Mauritius. Prime Minister, sir, the fact that African Union to be included as a member of the G20 is an initiative and a proposal that has been put forth by India. What do you have to uh, say? How do you look at the admission, if at all it happens, in this summit of African Union as part of the G20? I must say I'm very appreciative of the initiative of uh, Prime Minister Modi because Africa is a huge continent of maybe more than 1.3 billion people, so many countries, and yet we are not part of so many of the uh, groupings. Uh, and I think G20, which consists of uh, so many important members and which forms part of uh, major economies, uh, where policies are in fact uh, decided because we know when you have a majority of the major economies getting together, they set normally the trend. Uh, and I think Africa has to be part of it in order to be able to voice out mm. the views of not only Africa, but of those whose voices are not normally heard at those instances. So I am obviously very supportive of the fact that uh, this initiative is on the table and I hope that uh, Africa would eventually become a member. Personally, as the Prime Minister of Mauritius, do you think uh, you would want to bid as Mauritius as a country to be a member of the G20 separately? Well, this is an issue that has to be discussed, first of all, at government level. Mm. And uh, so we have to take time and, and of course, we will, we will consider. But uh, as, as, as it is today, there is uh, no stand that has been taken with regard to that. Okay. So we'll uh, wait for a decision from Mauritius. But moving on to the G20 summit itself. Now, India has done and put in a lot of effort. Uh, there were more than 200 meetings in over 50 cities. You're here in Delhi and you'll be seeing the spectacular uh, space that has been created for the leaders at the Bharat Mandapam. But how do you see India's role and India's presidency of the G20? I must say I'm very pleased to see the uh, initiative that has been taken by India. Uh, 
it has tried to include everybody. And uh, especially when we know that India uh, is playing now a very important role on the international scene. We look at the progress that India has m been making, not only uh, in economic terms, of course the economy is growing at a fantastic rate, but uh, in terms of improvement and progress in technology, in innovation, now we have to, I seize this opportunity to congratulate again India for the successful mission of Chandrayaan-3. Uh, and all this shows that India is making a tremendous progress in practically, I would say, all fields. And Sri Narendra Modi himself, when you look at the stature that he has today, has uh, the possibility to influence uh, more uh, in terms of the policies, in terms of the future that will guide us. Mm -hmm. So I am happy that India has taken this approach that, uh, and in fact is depicted by the theme that one earth, one family, one future, uh, which is of course derived from uh, the Vasudev Kutumbakam, that the whole world is one family. And uh, this is the approach that we should take to see to it that no one is left behind and that particularly the uh, challenges that we are facing. And I must say that many countries are grappling with uh, the challenges uh, in terms of the effects of, I mentioned before, of the COVID-19, the war in, in, in Ukraine. Uh, so I think it is important that we get together and that we see India taking this uh, leadership role and uh, also paving the way uh, for a more inclusive uh, uh, global uh, network. Right. Uh, Prime Minister Sir, the fact that Prime Minister Modi has been talking about developing countries and the crisis that now the world faces owing to the Russia-Ukraine war and many other situations, how do you see the G20 really look at the food and energy crisis that faces the world, particularly the developing nations and the global south? Well, I can uh, speak up about what we have gone through. Uh, recently, uh, you know, with the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been a uh, restriction in terms of movement of the people, lockdown, the closure of borders, and all the other measures that we have taken in order to try to protect the health of the population. And this has had a huge impact on the economic situation. And we are still uh, trying to rebound uh, in order to see how we can go back to a more normal life. But uh, we have suffered a lot. And uh, as I say, this has been compounded by the conflict in Ukraine, where there has been a dis disruption in the production uh, and of uh, commodities, especially for food items, in which Mauritius imports most of its food requirements. So you can imagine uh, how difficult it is, it has been, and it still is uh, for Mauritius to, to deal with uh, uh, prices of, of commodities. Government, of course, has acted. We have uh, given uh, huge subsidies, but we can only give subsidies, of course, up to a certain period and of course depending also on our resources. Mm -hmm. So food security is a priority and I see not only for us as a small island state but for many countries as well. This is one issue where we need to focus and discuss and see how international institutions also can act and review their regulation so that we have uh, a fairer distribution of uh, uh, food items. Energy is another very important uh, component uh, in which Mauritius has been 
you know, paying a heavy price because we import our, all our petroleum products. Prices have been going up, more than up than going down. And uh, we see now that some countries are even restricting the production. In fact, they are decreasing uh, production of petroleum products. Now, this is again compounded by sanctions which are imposed against uh, some countries, namely Russia, uh, which is a, a major uh, oil uh, exporter. And then there are other uh, countries where there are other issues like Venezuela, Iran. So this situation is, I must say, uh, the least favorable for uh, countries like us to be able to uh, carry on with our development agenda. And therefore, these are the issues that we would, uh, of course, wish to, to discuss further and see how, uh, you know, we can be supported uh, generally in order that we move and advance uh, in terms of the improvement of standard of living of the people. Well, food and energy crisis aside, there's another very important issue that uh, is very dear to the Indian administration's heart, particularly Prime Minister Modi, but also how the world community is now talking about it and island nations have been talking about it for a very long time, such as yours, which is climate change. How do you see the G20 really cope with and tackle to ensure mitigating the impacts of climate change? Again, I must emphasize the vulnerability of uh, island state like Mauritius. Mm. We are witnessing rising uh, sea level, which is more than the average uh, on, in Mauritius. And we see that, uh, unfortunately, there is erosion of uh, the coastal uh, area. And knowing that Mauritius is a touristic destination, you see how it in really is uh, endangering that sector. Uh, but apart from that, uh, we are subject to uh, cyclones uh, every year. And now we see that the cyclones are becoming even stronger and stronger. In other parts of the world, we have seen how cyclone and hurricane have devastated uh, some regions or even islands. So. This is a, a, a very, very serious issue that can only be tackled collectively. No one can say now and should not be saying that uh, what one country does is only affecting that country because it does affect not only its neighbor but the whole world. And that is why there is urgency to act on this front. I must say, I am a bit disappointed because we have been participating in different COP meetings, the last one that was held, again where countries have committed huge amount of money in order to support countries which have undergone loss and damage and also countries that are very vulnerable. But we have seen little of that money being really spent. Mm. And therefore, it should not remain only as a commitment. And it should not only be on paper that we have a fund for loss and damage. I hope we are working now on the criteria that will be set down in order to allow countries to be able to access to finance. But I can say that Unfortunately, Mauritius, we have uh, requested in the past uh, for uh, financing in terms of improving our infrastructure in order to be able to cope with such situation. For example, the uh, erosion of the coastal area requires a lot of investment. Uh, but I must say Mauritius has done its part. We are tr doing our best in order to mitigate against, uh, you know, the effect of climate change. But still, uh, we will require the support of the international community. And uh, again, I'm happy that uh, 
Prime Minister Modi has uh, raised this issue and has put it also as a priority and uh, therefore we, we are of course agreeable uh, on this matter also. Right, so you make a very important po point when it comes to climate change and uh, it is true that it is a fight between the developed and the developing and the least developed nations are the worst sufferers but even when it comes to climate change I'd say the worst sufferers are the island nations. So a lot of emphasis and importance that needs to be put in how to handle climate change. So thank you so much for that comment. But shifting focus to the global south, how do you think, uh, what, what do you think is the role of G20 in promoting sustainable growth and development for the global south? And how important is the, is the global south for the G20? I think that there are a number of countries that are already member of the G20 that have already put uh, issues that are of direct interest to them. Uh, but of course, it is a good thing because each country will normally uh, put on the table issues that are of great concern uh, to them. The Global South, uh, islands, small island states like Mauritius, other groupings also. But I think again what is important is that we analyze the challenges that uh, each country is facing. And then of course we have to uh, prioritize on how we're going to address those issues but then we must uh, at least give consideration to each and every one because this is the purpose of getting together, having meetings to discuss and debate and then to take decisions. But the decisions also, again, as I, as I say it, I, I make it as a parallel to uh, the issue of funding for the uh, small island states uh, in terms of facing climate change. There must be concrete measures that are taken uh, that will address those concerns for each and every country, whether they are in uh, a member of a group or a community. Uh, they should feel that uh, their issues that are very serious have to be have to be addressed, and this is why I say I'm happy that uh, the global south is represented, and Prime Minister Modi has even laid more emphasis on uh, the problems facing faced by the global south. He has organised uh, a special uh, session. Mauritius has been participating in, I must say, all the meetings prior to the summit. And we have brought our contribution. And of course, I'm happy that as uh, the head of government, I will be uh, viewing, I, I will be voicing uh, the views uh, of not only of Mauritius, but also of small island states, and of course, of uh, Africa as well. Right. But Prime Minister, sir, that these are these are very important areas that they've looked into but all that will boil down to what is it that is going to be at the at the end at the culmination of the summit which is a joint communique now we've seen the russia ukraine war becoming a matter of contention how do you see that deadlock really end can there be consensus within the g20 on the Ukraine war or many other uh, objections that other countries have raised? Can there be, can there be a, a, a consensus that can be formed? Let us first of all take stock of uh, what has happened in uh, Ukraine. I think both Russia and uh, Ukraine have suffered great loss in terms of people in terms of affecting their own economy uh, and in terms of the ongoing conflict that is very detrimental to both of them. Now, this is also affecting the whole world. As I say, there is a disruption in terms of the production of commodities. Prices of energy have been going up. In certain 
countries in Africa, they will not be able to import wheat, for example. And therefore, we need to uh, draw lessons from this. India, for example, is, I know the, India has very good relationship with both Russia and Ukraine. Mm. India, India can play an important role, like other countries also. Mauritius, of course, being a s small island, we also bring in our contribution. We are also very supportive to see to it that uh, this conflict comes to an end as quickly as possible and that we appeal to all parties for negotiation, for a diplomatic settlement. And uh, this, I think, will be interest of each and every one. Mm. I know it is easier said than uh, put into practice. It is a, a conflict that is uh, going on for now. Uh, I think people thought that you know it, it would end soon, but unfortunately, I, I, I see that it is in fact escalating. Mm. And uh, therefore, there is an urgent need for everyone uh, to try to put in every effort that is possible so that uh, this conflict comes uh, to an end. Right. Prime Minister, sir, you're here not just for the summit. There are also bilateral meetings that you'd be holding with Prime Minister Modi and uh, the External Affairs Minister is going to call on you. In terms of Mauritius-India relations, where do you see it headed? How best can we strengthen ties? Because Mauritius, geopolitically and geostrategically speaking, is quite well placed. It's an important country, important uh, island nation. So where do you see the strengthening of ties between the two countries and how? I think uh, relationship between uh, Mauritius and India are excellent. Mm. And uh, we are, in fact, uh, closing the celebration of 75 years of diplomatic uh, relations with India. And we can see how, over the years, this uh, relationship has been growing in strength. I think never before has uh, this relationship reached such heights. And that is due to uh, the will, of course, of both leaders, uh, of both governments, and uh, also from people-to-people -people relationship. You know, I give you one example to illustrate the consideration that India has for us. In the peak of the COVID pandemic, India was the first country to provide us with uh, vaccine mm. and medical equipment. Uh, and when we look at how many, uh, in how many sectors India has been supporting us, both on the technical, on the economic, on the social sectors, you can see the imprint of India in the socio-economic development of Mauritius, everywhere. Mm. And I need, need, need not list uh, the number of projects that have been financed by uh, government of India. The last one being, of course, the uh, Metro Express, uh, which is a system of uh, public transport which is really modern and has uh, been a pre prestigious uh, project. So, yes, uh, we have had a number of engagements with, uh, at a very high level with India, uh, from Prime Minister to Prime Minister, from Ministers uh, to Ministers. I am meeting with uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs, uh, Dr. Jay Shankar. I will be having a meeting with uh, Prime Minister Modi as well. And so uh, let us uh, continue and let us uh, keep on uh, strengthening this, this relationship, which is, as I say, uh, Narendra Mo uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has uh, qualified it as super special. So <laughs> that says it all. Okay. 
Super special. That's that's quite nice. But you also mentioned people to people. So in that, if I could say, the fact that you're uh, a prime minister, head of government of Mauritius of Indian origin, that speaks volumes of how uh, connected Mauritius and India are. There are so many people of Indian origin in Mauritius. What's your message? What's your message, Prime Minister, sir, to the people of India? And how do you see Prime Minister Modi's soft power policy when he engages people in Mauritius who are of Indian origin or at the diaspora? Well, we not only have a historic relationship, we have a blood relationship because uh, indentured laborers came from India to work uh, in Mauritius. Uh, thereafter, there have been migration also. Uh, Indians coming to Mauritius and now uh, you know in spite of the fact that our ancestors came with nothing uh, but through their hard work they have toiled uh, and make a lot of sacrifices and they, has, they have made tremendous progress and this without uh, giving away their culture, their tradition, their religion, and generation after generation, we have been able to preserve uh, those values. And of course, government is uh, giving tremendous support in order that uh, we transmit those uh, values to the next generation. So as you can see, uh, there is a natural uh, communion with uh, people who have originated from India, our ancestors who came from India, and uh, you know, uh, Indians. So, and we, I must say, we are also very proud when we see uh, the progress that is being made by India. I mentioned about uh, the uh, successful mission of Chandrayaan 3, uh, where India is really taking the lead. Uh, in the uh, aerospace uh, sector. So uh, we, we see it as natural and uh, of course we are an independent country, uh, we are sovereign, we have our uh, stand that we take on the international scene and we do discuss and we do see how there can be synergy between Mauritius and India we try to take common stand on certain issues. Uh, of course, not all the time do we see eye to eye, but uh, uh, you know, this is this is the the, the reality. And uh, but I'm happy that on on major issues uh, there can be consensus. And again, this uh, G20 is a platform. Uh, for us to engage with other countries, including, of course, India, uh, on those uh, priority areas. So not just historic, but also familial blood ties between India and Mauritius. That's, that's putting it very nicely. But there are challenges. There are challenges when it comes to the two countries, and there are opportunities. Where are the opportunities, and where do the challenges lie? The challenges... Uh, from the Mauritian perspective is that, for example, we have a huge uh, maritime uh, exclusive economic zone, 2.3 million square kilometers. And uh, as you know, uh, there have been a lot of problems that the, we have been facing in the Indian Ocean. There has been a problem of piracy, uh, of drug trafficking, of illegal fishing, of smuggling of uh, illicit uh, products. Uh, so all these uh, are of great concern to us and to countries of the region. And therefore, for example, with regard to piracy, uh, I am happy that there has been uh, international cooperation which has largely uh, made uh, decrease in, in, in piracy. Today you can say that it is, uh, I mean, the, the waters have been well policed mm. uh, and it have clamped down a lot on piracy. But likewise, we need to do uh, more in order to, uh, uh, you know, face uh, and track those illegal 
uh, activities like fishing uh, and drug trafficking. So Mauritius, we of course have limited resources and we need to partner with other countries like India, for example. We have an agreement with India on uh, maritime security and surveillance. We have ag an agreement with France uh, whereby with uh, Réunion Island there is uh, cooperation in terms of uh, military exercise. We have an agreement with uh, the United States of America and uh, where there are uh, operations that are conducted with the participation of Mauritius, uh, USA and some friendly uh, African countries. So uh, this cooperation is crucial uh, in order for us to be able to, uh, let's say, have law and order <laughs> in, in, in the Indian Ocean. And I salute the initiative of uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, for security and uh, uh, for in the region, the Sagar Initiative, which is, which is to me very important. Now, uh, we, we, we also have other opportunities uh, and we, uh, we are happy that we, have, we are the first African country to have concluded a trade agreement with India, the SECPA, mm. uh, which is working well because we see that the export of Mauritius towards India has been increasing and of course the export of India towards Mauritius has mm -hmm. always been huge. Uh, but this is a win-win situation and we need to enlarge this uh, agreement. Of course, this is the first step and uh, we will be making proposals. Uh, we will be discussing with India so that we want to see that Indian businesses uh, uh, seize this opportunity that Mauritius offers in order to penetrate the African market because we are a very stable country, we are safe, uh, we have a very uh, trans trusted and transparent uh, financial uh, sector, which is uh, recognized now by FATF, where we, uh, you know, satisfy and we are compliant or largely compliant uh, with all the 40 uh, requirements. Uh, we have a, 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 an independent judiciary. I mean, all those uh, are really advantages that businesses look uh, to. And we uh, have taken a number of measures to facilitate business in Mauritius. So my appeal to uh, Indian companies uh, is to seize this opportunity where now Africa is a huge market, Mauritius. Uh, is a signatory to the uh, African Continental Free Trade uh, Area, which covers 1.3 uh, billion people, and therefore the market is huge. And we are seeing a growing uh, middle class in, in Africa, in spite of you know, uh, problems that are faced by certain countries, tensions, but uh, the fact is that economies are, are growing, and therefore, uh, this is, again, a, an opportunity for uh, entrepreneurs uh, in India to, to, to seize this uh, opportunity in order to do business. And so I, I can see uh, on, on a number of uh, other, in other sectors where uh, there can be even uh, more cooperation. We, we are going to have an, ag an, a, an agreement uh, with ISRO. Uh, again, uh, and this comes at a very opportune time because, mm. <laughs> as I say, India is, uh, is now a leader uh, in, uh, in space uh, innovation and uh, therefore there is a lot, a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, a lot of uh, good things uh, so are coming. Are you looking at a space cooperation between India and Mauritius? Yes. Oh, we, okay. we, in fact, we are already agreeable. Mm to the terms and conditions of an agreement and uh, it's very likely that in the very near future there will be a, we will be signing an agreement. Okay, scientists of both sides working together, not yes, bad. Yes, and we want to, you know, encourage our youth also 
to take up uh, science subjects and uh, why not uh, see what are the opportunities that lies ahead for them. Right, sir. So, okay, from the space of space cooperation to a little lighter, on a lighter note, if I could ask you, you're of Indian origin. Um, do you or your family, do? does anybody watch Hindi films or Indian cinema? What's your favorite film or favorite song, if you have any? Well, the song uh, Bharat Ka Rane Wala Hoon mm -hmm. by Mahendra Kapoor in mm -hmm. the film of uh, Pura Bar Pachin, uh -huh. I think is uh, very appropriate right now. Okay, that's and nice. I, <laughs> yes, yes. I do, of course, I do listen to a number of songs from time to time. Mm -hmm. But I, I won't say that there is one particular favorite. Okay. Uh, but, you know, Mauritians are very fond of Indian movies. And uh, they have been watching a Singham series. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Roy Shetty mm. uh, when he came to Mauritius because he is now planning to shoot uh, the next series of Singham oh, wow. uh, in Mauritius. And who are the stars? And are the big uh, faces? The stars? Uh, well, I, I, uh, there are stars suppose, coming uh, to Mauritius, but I think I will leave him to mm. then uh, you know, publicly say <laughs> who are the stars who are coming. Mm. Uh, but uh, we've, again, this is going to put Mauritius on the map uh, yes. in terms of publicity. Yes. And I hope that uh, this will attract Indians to come and visit Mauritius. Yes, <laughs> Indians and also a lot of other filmmakers because that's a, lot, that's a nice revenue stream for Mauritius. But it's a very nice uh, thing that he just said in terms of how the two countries connect. It's not just uh, economic, strategic, but it's also people to people and the Indian cinema that is now connecting the two countries. And he... He picked up a very important song, Bharat Ka Rehne Wala Hoon, Bharat Ki Baat Sunata Hoon. Aaj G20 Summit ho raha hai, aur Bharat, Bharat Ki Baat Sunane Wala Hai. With the projection of India that you'd be seeing, India is going to be on the global map when it comes to the G20 Summit and how India is hosting the G20 Summit. On that note, sir, thank you so much for joining us here on India Today. Thank you, and if I can say, Bharat Ki Hardik Swagat Ke Liye Bahut. Danyavad. Over thirty hotels. More than 3,500 rooms. New Delhi gets ready to host the world's most powerful.